Yes. Gee whiz. Reverend Candace G with all of her vibrational wisdom. It's so good to see you, Reverend Candace. And good morning and grand rising across the planet in the Agape Nation. I am Akili Francis Beckwith, and it is my pleasure and my honor to be here to lead the way of meditation this morning. And yes, I have a couple of notes. Just want to make sure. First and foremost, I want to thank Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith, who happens to be my brother, for allowing me to take over his pulpit and to lead this meditation service. It reminds me of, I'm already starting my Dharma talk, so it reminds me of ah, the responsibility and the opportunity we all have to bring God into the earth plane, to bring heaven to earth. We get to do this, so I get to lead the way of meditation, and I'm thankful for that. Thank you, Reverend Michael, and Reverend Jason, Reverend Kathleen, Reverend Candace, and Reverend Victor Dickerson. So today's Dharma talk begins with such a wonderful reading from Paul Selig. Heaven is at hand, and the kingdom of heaven is within. So there we have it. There's nothing more I could really add to that talk because, but I am, because that reading said it all. What is meditation for? That is always the first question to ask anything in my practice and in a lot of our practices. Our first thing is to ask the spirit, what is this for? Where am I to go? What am I to do? What am I to say? And to whom? If that is my starting point, that will lead me right into a meditative state of mind, a mindset, or better still, a heart set, where I am allowing my real self, the self that I did not create, the holy image and likeness of the living God, allow that to flood my awareness to such a degree that I remember, as Reverend Candace read, that the kingdom of heaven is not a place in the sky. There is not a man in the sky taking notes. <laughs> in a sense, it is. Not a man, but the electrical vibration of the universe records our thoughts and our actions. And of course, what we plant, we harvest. So in that sense, heaven is right here within my heart and mind. And what I say, believe, and act upon, it reveals to me exactly where heaven is. Either it's far off someplace or it's right here within my being, within my consciousness, and I get to uncover it. Let me say that again. I get to, I get to uncover it. Many years we have walked this earth asleep, sleeping giants, the Christ being asleep within us, and we have awakened to it. So we get to bring heaven to earth by simply remembering and that sounds simple, but it's a profound practice and a profound exercise and a profound experience that leads to the realization of I am that I am. When Reverend Candace was reading, I was hearing Omni. There is a beloved friend of ours, an Agape member, who named her daughter Omni. And I just thought that was so cute because they'll never forget God is omniactive, omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient, everywhere, all the time, at once. The expression that God is, is always available, always extending, always expressing. That brings joy to my heart. Does it bring joy to your heart when you just think about it for a moment? My goodness, I did not, first of all, I didn't create myself. Therefore, I'm not responsible for creation. I'm a part of creation, and I get to express whatever qualities, whatever joy, whatever creativity, whatever love the divine expresses through my individual expression. I get to experience that. I get to bring heaven to earth. How good is that? I know many of us have walked the planet looking for our purpose. Am I going to be a doctor, a lawyer, a basketball player, a dancer, whatever it may be? 
It's the omni-activity of God no matter what it is. So if there's a sense of entitlement or specialness or any of that attached to our particular chosen purpose, let's throw it away. Give it back to God and say, basically, God, use me. That is the song that we sing here at Agape, the Use Me song. It doesn't say, let me use you, God. It says, use me. Use my mind, which is your holy mind. Use my spirit, which is your image and likeness. Use my evocative word, which is your word to create. And use this body temple as thy instrument. That is our calling. That is our purpose. And that is the way of meditation. Meditation is for us to renew and restore, as I like to say, our personal covenant with our inner higher self. We can be an atheist or a theist or a religionist or a zealot. It doesn't matter. Meditation is simply and profoundly the doorway to the divine. If we don't think it's divine, it's the doorway to intelligence. If we don't think it's intelligence, it's the doorway anyway. Because remember, we didn't create this. We're an extension of the all. So if, as I've said before, and I stand on it even now, if all the books were burned, if all of the music, oh my God, I couldn't remember, if we couldn't hear the music, we would still have meditation. If we couldn't see with our body's eyes, we could see with our spiritual eye. And through the practice, the diligent, consistent, surrendered practice of meditation, we have access to, <laughs> to what is called in certain tomes our divine inheritance. The kingdom of heaven that has everything within it is ours but for the access. Meditation is that entry point where we allow the divine mind to have access to its creation, which I am, the great I am, not the little Achille Francis, but the I am that I, oh yes, that God created spiritually in its spiritual image, its spiritual likeness, and out of its cosmic spiritual substance. I am, I am, I am. I am the open door. I am the doorway, Spirit is saying. And meditation is that way. So we know what it's for. What is our technique? There are what, nine billion people walking the planet probably? So there are nine billion access points to the divine. Some do Kriya Yoga. Some do kundalini yoga. Some do sitting in the stillness and the silence, as Reverend Candace prayed earlier. The stillness and the silence. How do we access that? By being still and being silent. And being, being, being with the breath of life. Breath, in my definition, and the divine definition, breath is spirit. As it's written in many scriptures, spirit God is closer than our breath. So the first emanation of that spirit has to be the breath. And it includes everything in itself. The intelligence, everything that is needed, the breath has it. Beyond our mind, breath is. So I like to practice being aware of the breath because the breath is intelligence itself. It knows how to move through our body. It knows how to move through the organs. If organs need adjustment or healing or any part of our body needs healing, the breath knows how to get there and do it. Even though we're thinking, I want to be healed of this. I want to access this. I want to manifest this. The breath is God and already knows what to do and how to do it. So when we access that, when we become aware of the holy breath and continue to come back to it with our mental discipline, bringing ourselves to the breath, not efforting, not trying to do something, but allowing and letting spirit have its way, oh my goodness, Wonders abound. The peace that passes human understanding is accessible. 
the healings that we are searching for, perhaps, are available. The breath allows that to be because the breath is God. I'm going to share that in the past, I was learning to breathe. I did some breathing exercises. Um, I think it's called conscious breathing. And I discovered how much I resisted spirit. I wouldn't let the breath in. It was an indication of my own resistance, my unwillingness to surrender completely. I wanted to maintain control, even in meditation. Well, I have to say that doesn't happen as often anymore. <laughs> so I'm glad I got to share that. I've just forgiven myself for having the idea that I could control the divine by controlling my breath. You know how you tell little kids they hold their breath until they turn blue? That kind of thing. Resisting the divine flow. Now, if you catch what I said, you can look at our life and you can see where we do that in other ways. I was giving a description of controlling the breath. But other ways do we try to control the divine flow in our life? We may but try to control our beloved or our children or anything that's none of our business. We try to control it out of a sense of separation and a sense of, I don't know. But as Reverend Candace reminded us in the reading, we now do know. And as I am speaking, we now remember the kingdom of heaven is at hand and it is within. Our access is in our heart. Our way is through meditation. Today, I'm going to invite you to meditate with the other millions of people across the planet who are doing the same thing right now. In this great web of life, we are impacting. We are impacting the newest sphere. We're impacting the vibratory field of the entire planet. We're allowing inspiration to be accessed and we're lifting the frequency and the vibration of this planet so that everyone can be lifted. As the Christ spoke through beloved Jesus, as I am lifted, I lift all into this frequency and vibration of love and light and power. Through meditation, we can let go of our sense of control, our sense of needing to do. As it says in the Course in Miracles, I need do nothing. Now a lazy person would say, oh good, I can just sit down and relax. Doesn't mean that. It means our little self can do nothing anyway, but make up stuff to do. But the great I am presence, our real spiritual identity, it is the doer, it is the mover, it is the revealer, it is the revelation itself. As it is said in metaphysical circles, what we are searching for, we're searching with. And since we are the image and likeness of God extended, I would int intelligently say there's nothing else but that. So whatever I think I'm looking for, if it's a manifestation of great wealth or a holy relationship or a new car or whatever it is, guess what I'm searching with? The divine. So why not meditate? Why not be in league with that? energy, that vibration, that frequency that creates all and allow everything to be created through us. Why not? We get to. We don't have to. I was speaking with beloved Sandra this morning, Sandra Teresa, and we were talking about people thinking they have to do something. A particular teaching was forcing them to do something. And we were discussing how it's such a blessing to get to. You get to reveal the kingdom of heaven. You get to have peace of mind. You get to have your blood pressure drop by meditating. That's just the gifts of the spirit that are just automatically given because you're in tune with yourself. So, so, hum. I believe that's enough. So we're going to meditate now, whatever your technique is. I invite you first and foremost to open your heart. 
If you're aware of the things called chakras, open your heart chakra. If you're not, matters not. Put your awareness and your attention on your heart. Not the heart that beats, but the heart of God that indwells you. Because in truth and in fact, we live in God. God doesn't live in us necessarily. We are living and moving and having our being in it. So I invite you to open your heart and I'm gonna go sit down and probably give some more direction. But while I walk over, everyone just take a nice full breath or receive the breath and allow it to move through your body. Feel your body, see where you may resist. If you need to move it, let's move it. If you need to shake your hands, I don't mean shake your hands, but shake your hands. Just to get the body, give it, give it a little movement. So the breath can just flow through it unencumbered without any hindrance. <sighs> and I invite you, veterans of meditation, to dedicate this particular meditation to the inner self. And as we always say, let this be your first meditation ever. Though your technique may be practiced and well rehearsed and active and have great fruits, today is a new day in the divine. The divine never repeats itself. So this moment of meditation is our first. I invite you, I welcome you, dare I say I love you as we move into meditation. I thank you in advance for all that you give with a full awareness that giving and receiving are one. So if you are sitting or whatever position you are in now, and if you are able to put your feet flat upon the ground beneath you, I invite you to use your inner sight to energetically shoot roots from the bottom of your feet deep into Mother Earth as we root ourselves electromagnetically into this space wherever we are, declaring this as a holy space, a sacred space, made sacred by our collective sacred intention to be with the spirit of the living God within us, the living energy, the living intelligence, the living light and love that moved upon its cosmic self and came into form as us. We get to reveal what we commune with. I invite you to commune with the spirit of the living one, that which is unnameable, invisible, whole and complete and perfect radiance and vibration in dwelling us, surrounding us, enveloping us, breathing itself in and through us, giving us its life, its life is abundance itself. Its life is intelligence itself. Its life is love itself. Its life is our life, the one life of the Creator. Let us move into the stillness, bringing our awareness to the breath without effort, but without passivity. We're not falling asleep. We are awake in the spirit, allowing and letting the breath guide and express as our life. Let it be so.
allow the breath to breathe. If your mind has wandered off, gently smile and bring your awareness back to the breath and allow the breath to breathe. Letting ourselves be breathed.
bringing our awareness to the breath. I invite you now to receive a soft breath with a conscious awareness and a deliberate intention. Being heartful and mindful that we are downloads of the divine. We are spiritual images and likenesses which means we are whole and complete and perfect being in light of light, in love as love, in joy. So let us give thanks within for all that we've allowed ourselves to receive, for clarity of heart and mind, for any insight or clarity, for unspoken revelation, give thanks. We give thanks for each other who are participating in meditation together. And we allow this eternal omnipotent spirit to go before us making its way our way. With our identity in love as love. With praise on our heart and lips gratitude, we simply and profoundly let it be so, and so it is. Amen, Ashe, Aho, Alhamdulillah. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you, Akili. That was wonderful. Ah. Such a gift, this practice that we have, this opportunity to be together. Now we actually have an opportunity to show our appreciation for this. We receive so much from being a part of Agape. I was just reflecting uh, the other day, yesterday, in fact, that It'll be almost 20 years that I've been a part of this community soon, and I cannot imagine what my life would have been like for the past 20 years. And I know I'm surrounded by people like Akili who have been here since it began more than 35 years ago. We participate in a law of circulation where we give back to the places and spaces that give to us and enrich us. So now is an opportunity to do that. You, if you're on our website, you should already know that you're on a safe and secure, way, secure website, a place where you don't have to be concerned about what happens to the data that you input on the site. If you want to, all of the veterans can go ahead and begin their process now. You might be an auto tither. You might know exactly how to do your text to donate. Go ahead and proceed. If you're on our Facebook page or on Reverend Michael's Facebook page, uh, you can begin that process now. You can look for that donate button that's right there on the website and on the Facebook page. And of course, if you are uh, beginning this process for the first time, you can uh, text the word give to 424-321-6243. And of course, if you wanna drop it in the mail, our mailing address is 8549 Wilshire Boulevard. 
number 1156, Beverly Hills, California, 90211. You can do any or all of those options for yourself. Ah, we thank you for that. I'm going to take a moment just to speak a blessing as you begin that process. How grateful I am for the opportunity that we have right here, right now to consider giving, to make our offering in appreciation for life. How grateful I am for the living intelligence that has shown us how to sow and how to reap, how to plant and how to harvest. How grateful I am for the awareness of this as our individual lives are absolutely one with this presence, one with this truth. And so as we go forth, I'm blessing our conscious awareness of giving and that we go forth and we give of our best. And so it is. Amen. So while you are in that process, I'm going to bring up practitioner Wayne Bottomley, who has a few announcements for us. Wayne. Thank you, Reverend Jason. Good morning, Agape. It's a beautiful day here at Agape, and we're grateful that you're joining us. Please visit the Agape website at agapelive.com for details on all of these announcements and more. Your life vision is calling you. Are you ready to catch the highest idea of your life straight from the field of infinite possibilities? Tune in with Reverend Coco Stewart and Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith and take a deeper dive into the principles and practices revealed in his book, Life Visioning. This six-week course begins Tuesday, June 7th at 6 p.m. Register now. In today's climate, where it appears that anger and polarization are continuously on the rise, life can feel overwhelming. We can surrender to the hopelessness or embrace our soul's call to join a potential and a power that is greater than what we hear and see around us. If you're ready to step into that greater good, join us for Awakening, Embracing Your Soul's Purpose, a meditation and visioning virtual intensive with Reverend Michael Beckwith on Saturday, June 11th from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Register today at agapelive.com. Today, Tina Agape, ages 14 through 19, meets online at 11.15 a.m. For information and to join, click the Tina Agape banner on the website. Preteens, ages 9 through 13, meet at 2 p.m. Children, ages 3 through 8, meet at 3.30 p.m. Both are on live Zoom. Pardon me. The Crisis Support Clinic offers Zoom mini counseling sessions every Monday from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Email us at crisissupport at agapelive.com for more information. This Tuesday, Laughter Yoga meets on Zoom at 6 p.m., facilitated by Agape Master Practitioner Martin Weech. Click on the banner on our website to register. Loving Hands Unite, the Adoption Foster Care Fertility Ministry, will hold their monthly meeting this Friday, June 10th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. If you would like support with any aspect of the adoption process, email lovinghandsunite at agapelive.com to join us. And Happy Pride Month! The LGBTQ Plus Ministry invites you to the second Saturday monthly meeting on Zoom at 3 p.m. on June 11th with Reverend Skip Jennings. Please contact LGBT at agapelive.com for more details. We look forward to seeing you on Facebook Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. for daily prayer and 12 noon for meditation. Go to agapelive.com for details. Agape Spiritual Community Gathering is in session. Join us every Friday at 5.30 p.m. and connect in community for an enriching, inspiring gathering. Email scg 
at agapelive.com for more information. For years, Reverend Michael has taught about the compo components of good, healthy living. Our spiritual life is enhanced with daily meditation, affirmative prayer, and fellowship with open-hearted, like-minded people. Our mental and emotional body is purified with study, forgiveness, and high intentionality. And our physical body is taken care of with the exercise that fits your uniqueness, proper nourishment, proper hydration, and ideal supplementation. Regarding ideal supplementation, the Rev has finally released AdaptoZen in partnership with Nutrarize. AdaptoZen is comprised of the various superfood formulas Rev has been taking for years to maintain his health and energy, all condensed into one product line. AdaptoZen's superfood greens and the vitamin D3 and K2 drops boost your energy, mood, and immunity, and gives your body temple the high quality nutrients it needs to thrive so you can maintain your health to live optimally, especially during times of high stress. Go to NutraRise.com, click on AdaptoZen, and get 10% off of your first order. And you are invited to dance with the Rev Show us your moves in a one-minute video dancing during a Sunday service and upload using the banner on the Agape website. That's all for now. Have a beautiful day. Thank you so much, Wayne Bottomley. Let's take an opportunity to speak a blessing together as a community for all that has been brought forth during our time of offering and giving. How grateful I am for this community and all of the ways that it shows up so magnificently. How grateful I am for the word that has come through Akili Beckwith and the time that we've spent in community today, anchored in an awareness of the all, the eternal, the living intelligence, that presence which is our very lives. We celebrate all that has been given. We celebrate it being placed into good soil. And we celebrate the return that we receive in our lives. And we do not limit the presence in all of the infinite ways that it will return the abundance as our very lives. We're thankful for it. We're thankful for this global community. And we simply let it be so as we declare it as the reality of our lives today. And so it is. Amen. Mm. We've had a wonderful time today at the Way of Meditation service. I'm calling our brother Akili Beckwith up to the platform who will give our benediction for our service today. And he's, he's, he's acting like he wants me to do it. And I'm acting like I want him to do it. While, I'm, while we're getting our act right together, I'm going to uh, invite you to return to our services today. We have our meditation service at 8 a.m., our service at 8.30. We have our meditation service at 11 a.m. and our service at 11.30. Powerful, powerful speaker, Reverend Julie Moret, will be bringing the powerful message on this day. We are excited about it. So be here with us. Akili. <laughs> Thank you, Reverend Jason. <laughs> I love our community. So let us turn within once again. The way in is the way out. Omnipresent spirit, we're surrounded and indwelled by it. So our benediction is simply acknowledging with devotion, turning to and turning towards the divine, giving thanks for life, for breath, for being for each other, allowing and letting spirit be itself uniquely as us, as our global community, as our agape community, as community. God is all that there is, all forms, all names, all expressions. We get to consciously participate in this thing called life. Thankfully and lovingly, we let it be. And so it is. Amen. Good day. <laughs>